Hello everyone, welcome to the next part of my video series for my Beetleweight Combat Robot Psychotic Break. In the last video we talked about the weapon hub and the whole assembly, the bearings and everything that held that in place. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this frame mock-up. I've mocked this whole thing up in wood and um, gives me an idea of some of the sizes and all that. So I'm going to tear this down, show you kind of um, what I'm thinking in terms of the frame assembly. And um, I also have the motor hooked up as well as a pulley so we can put this in the test arena and kind of turn this on and see what happens. So let's get started. If you remember back to one of the earlier videos in this series, I think it was maybe the weights video, I determined that the top and bottom piece would be about a quarter inch thick. And so I have this um, laser cut quarter inch wood that I got just from Home Depot. It's just some sort of like hobby plywood. This is the same material that I used for the weapon. And so this is still just a rough prototype of the shape of the outline. Typically the way I like to start is I like to start with something kind of generic and big that I know that everything is going to fit in there, and then I kind of um, optimize it from there. So generally speaking, I know that I'm probably going to be able to fit some batteries in here, some motors. This is just kind of the rough general shape. But as I will show in a minute with the weapon like this, it almost comes into contact with the weapon motor down here, and this is about maybe as small as it can be in certain dimensions. As I talked about in the weapon stack up video, the distance from here to here was about a, uh, one and a quarter inches. Uh, this is sitting at one and a quarter inch. I actually think I could go down to one and an eighth. So there's some slight tweaks here and there, but generally speaking, this should be good for testing out the belt tensioner, testing out belts, testing out the motor, stuff like that. So let's um, bring this over to the other workbench and kind of tear it apart and I'll show you what's going on with it. So here is a better look at the mock-up at this point. Um, in terms of dimensions, this thing is actually quite large. Um, we're sitting at about six inches in this dimension. I think this whole body is about, eh, like from here back is four and a half, something like that. And the body itself is about 11 three quarters, almost 12 inches. So that means with the weapon extended straight out, from the tip of the weapon to the back is about 17 inches. So this is a pretty large beetle weight. And then of course the wheels are gonna be out on the side. So this is gonna end up having a pretty substantial footprint to it. So this is the bottom right now, this is the top. Um, I'm gonna take off um, these screws, take off the top, and we'll kinda get a look at how everything's arranged inside. So it's pretty simple on the inside, obviously for right now. Um, I have these four standoffs back here and then the weapon shaft in front. Uh, if I take off this belt and take off the weapon shaft, you can see basically the um, skeletal structure of this. I kind of want to make this an exoskeleton. So this frame is going to sit on the outside of the robot and then the um, 3D printed frame that holds all the guts will actually slide on the inside of this and kind of be sandwiched inside this shell. So it's going to be more like an exoskeleton on a um, insect because this is insect class. So the frame is going to sit on the outside and the inner goody bits are going to sit on the inside. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do there. I might end up going a little bit thicker with these standoffs. Um, they could be sufficient, but we will see. Uh, the motor right now is just kind of simply screwed down into the base like that. And you might notice that these components are mirror images of each other. I'm trying to keep the top and the bottom identical. So you might see that there's a hole here and a hole there. Um, one of these mounting patterns, this mounting pattern is for the weapon and this is for the um, bearing that holds everything in place. So I'm trying to keep this as mirrored as I can. Here is a closer look at the weapon motor with its um, pulley on it. I'll get a side view, it looks something like that. I am still playing around with belts and pulleys and all that. So this is just, you know, a mock-up of the um, pulley groove. And you see I have this um, flanged bearing sitting on top. So if I pull this out, this actually seats into the underside 
like that, and then goes into this little nub right there. And so this helps um, with stability in this axis for the motor. So what I didn't want to do is just leave this completely off. So then the motor could, you know, push and pull and the only mounting point would be at the bottom. So right now I have it mounted into the bottom of the frame and then the um, shaft is supported by the bearings inside the motor. And then the top portion of the pulley is then supported by this additional bearing and that keys into the frame like that. Eventually, um, we will see, but I'm kind of planning on this little nub being a um, piece of aluminum. I think what I'm gonna do, um, these are some other pulley options, I got some smaller ones, is this might be just a little insert that's like a flanged piece that pushes in from the back side, so it is um, aluminum instead because I'm not really thrilled with that just being um, the nylon material. Regarding the pulleys, I just kind of uh, ordered some belts off of McMaster just to kind of test out. And it turned out that the original pulley, which is this one, was too small. The belt was way too loose. So I just made a pulley bigger to take up some of the slack of the belt. For the weapon hub, this is going to be the fixed ratio up front. This little pulley cannot really get any smaller because it starts to interfere with this bolt hole pattern. I could make it bigger if I wanted, um, but this is basically as small as I feel comfortable making it. It's a little bit smaller than the actual radius of the weapon or the diameter of, of the weapon, um, but this is kind of fixed. I wanna keep this about the same and I will adjust then the uh, ratio by having different sizes over here and then adjusting the size of the belt. So that's kind of a little bit, I'm gonna have a whole video where I talk about the ratio between uh, these pulleys and how to calculate all this. But for right now, I'm just kind of, you know, getting things working and this is going to be the rough final size of this side of the pulley. And on this side, I just adjusted it for the belt. So let's talk heights. Um, earlier in the one video, I talked about um, how much height I needed from the bottom of this frame to the top of the other frame. And these are my um, little thrust bearings. These are 16th of an inch thick. And if I have one in here, one in the bottom, something like that, you notice I've still got quite a bit of room here. Um, I think I even have a third one, there we go. So this actually sits pretty good right now. This is um, just slightly below, the shaft is slightly taller, and I have one extra, and I really don't need this one either, so, there we go. So this configuration is actually ideal in terms of height, and I have two extra 16th inch. So I've got an eighth inch worth of vertical that is just extra. And if I look over here, um, you might have noticed I'm using this little uh, mounting plate. These are the mounting plates that kind of come with the motors. This is uh, almost an eighth of an inch tall, and I'm using this just as a spacer. I'm actually not screwing into this at all. I'm just screwing into the motor directly. This is just a spacer. So I can actually bring this whole thing down an eighth of an inch, which is really nice um, because it'll just consolidate that much more space. And I want the shaft and everything basically as short as possible. I think the last thing to talk about before we fire this thing up is the belt tensioning mechanism. Uh, this was just kind of done by hand. But if you look on the top, you can see that I have these three holes. All I did was just kind of see generally where the belt was coming um, from this pulley to that pulley. Um, I just kind of attached it on there, made some measurements, whatever. And I made three holes along this axis. Since the belt is coming straight like this, these will be increasingly closer into the belt and give me increasing tension. Uh, the tensioning system is going to be a little bit different on the final one, but this is yeah, close enough. And I just have those three holes. I have a 632 screw going into two flanged bearings. Now these are the same flanged bearings that I used for there. And so basically the belt rides against the side of it like that. And if I put this together, you can kind of see what I mean. Got one more down there. Let's 
So this is just kind of the belt tension as it stands right now. It's a little bit loose. It's not too bad. Um, some of that is actually the front end flexing up a little bit. And then we'll go in there. And you can see when I start to get closer, there's a little bit of resistance in here. So there you go, there is the belt tensioner. It just kind of presses against the belt. And I could move this to the further point and get a little bit more tension, but you know, this is fine for just kind of initial testing. Um, but that's kind of what I'm gonna do for the belt tensioning system. I might do a series of screws or I might do a slot or a channel to where you can slide the tensioner up and down. So I think the only thing left to do in this video is just get this fully together, get this in the little test box and turn it on and see what happens. I really, honestly, there's no point to testing this like this because it's a wooden weapon, it's a wooden frame. I know this is gonna spin, but you know what? It's fun, let's just um, hook this up and see what happens. Uh, I've got a 60 amp ESC on here. This is the same ESC from Anxiety Attack. I'm not gonna need the 60 amp. Um, I'm gonna go with a much smaller 40 amp, um, but this is just for testing. And then I have um, just my standard receiver over here. This is a really simple setup because this does have a BEC on it. So that powers the radio and I just have these little Wego connectors everywhere. So um, I'm gonna plug in the battery, connect this all up and I don't know, maybe this thing will explode, we'll see. Uh, the other thing that I didn't really say is the clearance on this right now is very close. I wanna say it's about an eighth of an inch between the tip of the weapon and the motor. I might end up increasing that a little bit, but typically in my designs, I make everything rigid enough. So that gap is just kind of wasted space to me. So who knows, we'll see. Um, but right now it is extremely close. So let's get the um, top of this on there and uh, power it up. So here is the first test of psychotic break. I've got it inside my nice little safety enclosure here. I put some double stick tape on the bottom side of it and put a um, five pound piece of 4140 on the top just to kind of hold it in place. It was getting a little squirrely. So let's give it a tiny little bit of power. There we go. So that's one notch on the controller. Um, obviously it has plenty of power, so it's gonna spin up real quick. So we're about half power right now. Let me just give it more. Interesting. Sounds kind of like the belt is rubbing or something. It doesn't really want to get up to a full speed. Interesting. Kind of sounds like it's not, it's like laboring a little bit. Yeah, let me take a look and see what happens. And this is why you do testing. So interesting thing and lesson learned. These were made out of PLA and I didn't think there was going to be that much friction and that much heat, but I was very much wrong. Um, look at the amount of tension in this belt. Um, it just basically lost all of its tension, even with the um, little tensioner on here. Even this isn't enough. Um, the belt is just super loose and wasn't able to transmit power. So when it got up to um, higher speed, it was just kind of rubbing like that and might not be able to show up on camera, but there's a much deeper groove in here. And same with the motor. It just started eating away and melting the plastic inside there. I hadn't intended on using PLA for the final pulleys. I was gonna use the um, Polyjet nylon stuff. So I am gonna reprint these in Nylon G and Nylon X and see if that helps the problem. Not really definitive, um, you know, just of, as of yet, this isn't the final material. I could always make these out of aluminum or add kind of like a metal insert, something like that. But kind of an interesting little fact. I didn't think with the um, wood weapon blade that there'd be enough torque or really enough force to um, create any issues like this. So pretty interesting stuff. 
Um, so anyway, the next video is going to be all about um, belts and pulleys. So I'm going to go change these out to something a little bit more durable. We're going to be talking all about belts and why these little thin tiny ones are probably more than adequate. You don't need big belts for your stuff, people. Um, so anyway, we're going to be talking about that in the next video. As always, check out my Facebook page for any channel updates and things like that. And check the uh, description down below for all sorts of links and fun things. And if you do um, want to help support this channel, you can use the Amazon link down below to help give a kickback so more of these great videos can be made. So as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.